Hey guys, what's going on today? It's me, Dal Su, and uh, I know I've been saying I'm going to play Stellaris, and I've been playing, I've been making all these grand plans to play all these other games, man. But I have just like all of them are on hold because I'm, I'm fucking obsessed. Hearts of Iron Four came out about a week ago, and since then, every like waking moment has been spent like on Hearts of Iron Four. I mean, every time I'm not doing other shit, man, it is so good. It is one of the best strategy games, maybe the best strategy game that I've ever played, at least for me personally. Now, keep in mind, I didn't really play Hearts of Iron 3, but I've, I've been a big fan of Paradox games for a long time. I tend to kind of suck at them, but for some reason, this game just absolutely suits me like perfectly to a T. I've been waiting my whole life to play this game. It's a World War II sim, if, you, if you're not familiar, and it basically simulates, you know, most aspects of the war to some degree and I mean people tell me that this is more simple than 3 so I'm definitely going to retroactively go back and play 3 and play the other Hearts of Irons but for now this game is like scratching the itch let me tell you I'm I'm getting super super obsessed and I thought I'd go ahead and like push this way up to the front so to speak because there's a lot of other games I've been making grand plans to play but I just can't tear myself away, man. I cannot tear myself away from Hearts of Iron 4. I love this game. So I'm actually going to start a brand new game. And I'm going to play as America. As you know, the 4th of July is coming up. And, uh, you know, I'm not a very patriotic person. Um, I, I mean, I don't want to get into to politics with you. But, uh, you know, I, I view America as kind of like a giant, massive empire that's not you know not any one thing and so it's hard for me to feel any real sense I mean, plus i'm from louisiana and we're basically just a colony you know more than where i i feel that way and a lot of louisianans feel that way too but anyway political things aside um i will play as america in honor of fourth of july but i think i'm going to go fascist i'm going to become a fascist fdr uh, and, and try to take over like maybe all of South America, maybe attack Canada. I don't know. Definitely uh, Mexico might be in there. Cuba. I'm gonna try to stay out of the old world for a little while. Now, um, eventually, I may go on and try to take over the whole world because I love this game and I don't want to stop playing it. And if the series has any kind of popularity, then I'm just gonna keep on rocking it and probably keep on rocking it even if none of you watch because this is the game that, <laughs> that I want to spend my time on right now. Okay, but uh, we start off as democratic, which means we can't attack other countries, which sucks because, um, you know, we have to do the right thing, so to speak. Uh, we get home of the free, which protects us from ideological drift. I believe that's only when other countries try to uh, drift your ideology, but when you do it, I don't think that affects you. Uh, the Great Depression really, really sucks right off the bat. Um, it costs political power. Your consumer goods are pretty high, 30%, and uh, your recruitable population is half. So your manpower is half right off the bat. Plus, you have this shitty thing, which is undisturbed isolation because, you know, America was um, wanted to be insular, I guess, at the time. It's historically accurate, but it really, really sucks. Um, it actually con makes your construction speed for both civilian and military half. And... Um, what else does it do? Yeah, it makes it harder for you to join a faction, and it makes it hard hard for you to do lend lease agreements, and to just to do anything basically. So you start off uh, pretty weak, but then you sort of steamroll as the years go on, which is kind of what actually happened, if you know the history. I'm a pretty big history buff, so I'll try to be like including history here and there when when and where I can, um, because I you know I I love World War II era history. And there's a, you know, I don't know if you know, but New Orleans, where I live, is the home of the National World War II Museum, which I visit probably once or twice a year. And, you know, of course, I read uh, World War II books, and, and, and I'm just slightly obsessed with the era. So I'm really, really excited. Um, another tip just want to drop before we start. If you're playing Hearts of Iron 4, you should go to radio with three O's at the end dot com. And you can actually choose any country in the world and choose a decade and you can hear the rate like popular songs from that decade so you could go to the united states circa 1940 because the soundtrack of the game is good but it's not like i mean there's a lot of songs on repeat that's so better to do the the radio thing uh we're gonna play on regular um veteran i mean it doesn't make the ai any better it just gives you some kind of shitty um modifiers like as far as i know it doesn't change the ai behavior at all i might be wrong on that you know let me know but uh, yeah, so 
that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave historical AI focuses on, which means Japan may or may not attack me, depending on how they fare in their war with China. And uh, the German Reich will, um, you know, kind of just wreck shit in Central Europe. And that's basically how it'll go. Now, if we do play as fascists, which is the plan, we probably won't get involved in all that for some time. You know, um, the AI it will have its hands full with you know, battling each other. And we're, we probably won't join a faction for at least a little while. I don't know. I don't know exactly how I'll feel as time goes on. I've never played as a fascist before. Uh, I, I kind of know how to do it. But uh, we're, we're going to just make it work. I'm going to call this Murica. July 4th. Beer and Eagles. Oh, that's too long. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to play an Iron Man, obviously. So there will be no going back if we make a mistake. Uh, fair warning. I do play a little slowly. I know some people don't really like that. Uh, because, you know... This game, you know, you control the time yourself. And so, really, you could leave it very slow and, and, you know, micromanage everything. And I do really like to micromanage. I'll try not to do too much of that on camera. I have my own game that I'm playing off camera where I'm, like, at the, you know, slowest speed at all times. But uh, we'll try to go a little bit faster here. But the first thing I'm going to do, probably, is, like, organize myself. Because I'm going to have shit kind of all over the world that needs to be sort of organized. So we'll do that. I might do some of it off camera, but mm, I don't know. I'll probably do it on camera because it needs to be done. Uh, and, and, and those of you who actually are interested in this game and are playing it, uh, you know, you'll probably want to see how I, how I organize my stuff because you may do it differently. Uh, but before we do that, we'll just like get rid of these tabs. I don't know if we'll actually get to even play this episode, which I know is unfortunate for some of you who are probably really... Um, you know, not as, not as patient. But if you're not really a patient person, the game's kind of not for you. I mean, I'm not a patient person sometimes, but when, when it comes to games like this. Anyway, I usually start off with construction. That's going to uh, increase construction speed, which is a big which is a big boost. Uh, I like production efficiency as well. Start off with, like, some industrial things to kind of get your industry going. Uh, this is a very, very important tech, concentrated industry, so I try to kind of get work towards that. Uh, research time decreased would be super nice. I mean, we're not going to be at war for quite some time, so I don't think it really makes sense to research any specific planes or anything. Um, Naval Doctrine, we start off with Base Strike. I don't really know how I feel about that. I'm going to have to kind of like read those tooltips carefully. Uh, yeah, so Land Doctrine, we start off with Superior Firepower, which is a pretty good one, I think, um, from, from what I've experienced. Artillery, uh, yeah, we, we're going to want we're gonna want armor, obviously. Um but there's not too much like I'm in a super big hurry to grab. I'll probably just grab support weapons, what I usually do. It's like a, a universal boost to infantry and and some of the things that you kind of start out with anyway. So And it's also a 1918 tech, so the fact that I don't have it is slightly disconcerting. So I'll probably go ahead and grab that. So that sets me up with four techs, all of which are kind of just general uh, industry kind of ramping up stuff. Now, um, to see how many factories I start off with, civilian factories, I usually use this menu. 32 factories that I can actually use or trade. That's that's pretty good. Uh, I think in my England game, I started off with like 20 or something like that. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so 32, I probably won't build anymore, maybe. Uh, you know, if... If I have 32, that means I can fully build two, th two things at once, plus a little bit of another one. I think I should probably get at least like 35 or 36 to start off with. Uh, how about Nebraska and Missouri and Arkansas? Okay, there we go. Uh, that'll that'll start us off with uh, some, some construction there. And for military factories, we have five free, and then we have um, eight naval dockyards. So the temptation is usually to start off with with a lot of infantry equipment because uh, you're going to have usually like a pretty big reinforcement need. Yeah, see, we're going to need some some of that going. Um, but I don't like to put too many of them in here because by the time you, like, it takes about six months to a year to fill your need. Let's see, it'll actually tell me. And uh, maybe it won't tell me actually. No, here's here's where you hover. No, it's not gonna tell me. Well, that's weird. Anyway. 
Well, I mean, I can do the math, at, uh, <laughs> or, or I can not do the math. But at only this much a day, it's going to take quite a while. 100 days will put us at, right, 1100. So it'll take about, I don't know, uh, half a year, I want to say. And I'm comfortable with that, really. Like, I don't want to waste a bunch of factories. Because by the time, when you get full, when you get to the point where you're full, uh, then unless you're training more troops, which I'm not going to be doing for a while. I'm going to have manpower problems for the first little while. So I'm probably not going to be training too many infantry divisions. I'll probably just go with like one more in there. I think that'll be good. That'll bring it up to 17. That's weird. It didn't decrease my production cap very much. Did they change that? Usually when you add factories, your production efficiency goes way down. I'll put uh, two into support equipment because it says we only need 41, but I think that number might be wrong once I start going. So I'm going to go ahead and do three. Yeah, it's not decreasing my efficiency very much, which is good, actually. And... Apparently, I have towed artillery already in some of my divisions, uh, so I'll give you just... How many do we have left? Two? I don't really care to build any more carrier fighters, but I'm going to have to wait and see. I think I'm going to save those two factories for when I... Well, there's really no sense in saving them, is there? All right, let's just put them here, and then we can always take them out and put them somewhere else. It doesn't really hurt anything when you take one away. Like It doesn't hurt your efficiency. But I was hoping to get something else started right now. But I've got to organize myself um, and kind of figure out what troops I have where and what I need. I'm going to go with five destroyers, which is, you know, probably pretty good. But again, I'm, I'm not really uh, sh totally sure about what I need right now. This heavy cruiser is going to take forever. I'll give him a couple so he can maybe finish a little earlier. A uh, couple into submarines I think would be okay. And then... We've just got like one more we'll put into destroyers. Okay. Uh, we need to pick a national focus. Um, since I'm hoping to go fascist, I don't think there's anything I can do that would help me become fascist as far as over here. Political power. This would actually help because I can then hire the fascist guy. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So far as I can tell, there are no like social uh, focus tree things that actually give you any kind of fascist yeah see this like this can make you fi I don't really understand why the game has all these trees where basically the only thing you get from it is you're allowed to attack someone I I mean I guess that makes sense but there's gonna be war anyway by the time you research down to there world war is gonna start and it's gonna be a hundred percent tension and you're just gonna be able to go for it What does Monroe Doctrine do again? Increases trade options. Yeah, I don't want to do that. This does allow you to take over... Well, one of them allows you to take over Venezuela. But if I'm fascist, I can pretty much just take over anyone. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this one. Because then I can hire a fascist advisor and he will help me become fascist. As far as I know. We have low manpower. I know. Uh, less than 100,000 people. And insufficient resources. What are we missing? Just one rubber, huh? Yeah, England's got our rubber. I don't know if we go fascist if they're still going to want to trade with us. Is it worth it? What am I building with the rubber? I mean, is it worth it to trade away my civilian factories? Not for this. I mean, I don't really care about these right now. These are shitty fighters that go on carriers, and I'm going to be upgrading them like as soon as I start ramping up. So it doesn't really make sense to like trade away for that rubber just to get you know a few more carriers. I mean, a few more carrier fighters. You see how the different color here? It means that the efficiency, because of lack of resources, negative 30%. So I'm building 30% less of those. But I really don't want them. Like, it's just kind of a placeholder. Because it will keep efficiency up by being there um, for fighter planes. So that's kind of my strategy there. All right, so now comes the fun part where we're going to, like, uh, kind of organize. And it's going to take a little minute. So just bear with me here. I'm going to take all my troops that are here in America and assign them uh, like to an army. It's kind of annoying because you can find it a little hard to select everyone at once, but uh, I think if I hold down shift, then that will work. Yeah? Okay. So all you guys are going to be assigned to an army, and I'm going to give you somebody. Uh, now, field marshals can have no limit, but you only get like two of them. So... 
Supply consumption, combat width. He's got max entrenchment plus combat width. I think I might have to go with Ike uh, because of the supply consumption. Because if I do that, then I can train my troops and not worry so much about them. Because they're going to get... A, no, actually, let's see. This is, this is a little bit confusing. When you tell your troops to exercise, they get attrition. But attrition doesn't necessarily um, sync up with supply. Like supply is when you're kind of cut off or you're far away from the supply route or whatever. I don't think that actually helped with attrition that we're getting from training. I was a little bit confused about that and still am. There are a lot of things in the game that I don't understand perfectly. I'm hoping I got some fans out there who like this game and are going to leave me lots of tips. It is a complicated game that would really benefit from like putting our heads together. So we're going to grab uh, Ike there, and he's going to, yeah, he's going to control this whole army, the, the, US, the USA army. Let's uh, give it a more interesting name here. The Home Guard is what I usually call my home army, although they're probably going to be invading Canada, so they won't really be a Home Guard. Sorry, Canada. But yeah, everyone's in there. Okay, so now what we do is pretty simply... We just try to find who else we've got. Okay. So I'm probably going to assign all of these guys. Oops. Sometimes I misclick. Okay, we got all these guys, and you can... These are all, like, garrisons of different places. And so what I usually do is, like, I assign these guys to a secondary army. Because I want them to also have the benefit of a general... Even though they're not necessarily going to be like fighting together so much, uh, they're, they're, they benefit a lot. I mean, you get 10% uh, attack, 10% defense, even from a shitty general like this guy. Um, I don't see any good traits that I really care about too much. Entrenchment might be nice, but max entrenchment plus one, is that even decent? And this guy doesn't gain experience very fast. I mean, these are going to be mostly defensive, so it might make sense... Yeah, let's, let's get the guy who can do entrenchment, even though it's a very small amount of entrenchment. And what we're going to do now is we're going to assign these guys to defend certain areas. So you click on the garrison order, and you kind of just go to all the places that you control as America. So uh, Puerto Rico is in here somewhere, right? Uh, where's Puerto Rico? Damn it. Damn geography classes. Uh, it's over here. Okay. Puerto Rico, there we go. I don't think these are mine. I think these belong to France. France's color is kind of the same color as you. Anyway, I don't care about those islands. I don't think I own those islands. Obviously, I care a lot about uh, Hawaii. Is this is this Hawaii? <laughs> that doesn't look like Hawaii. What that? Oh, no, okay. This is Hawaii. <laughs> All right, so we got Hawaii. I think this might also be my area. Yeah, it is. These are, what, the Marshall Island? I don't know. Uh, yeah, that would be good. And we have a few other, like, areas. It can, it's hard to tell sometimes whether it's France's or yours, but I don't really care about these little islands too, too much. I care about the Philippines uh, because I'm actually um, the colonial master of the Philippines. Yeah, so I care about those places. And I care about this place a little bit because it's kind of my closest spot to Japan. Um, yeah, okay. We'll include you. You. So that you guys can get some defense. And then, of course, uh, Alaska needs to be taken care of. What else do we miss? Christmas, blah, blah, blah. Islands, islands, islands. Islands, islands, islands. Panama, Puerto Rico. Okay, I think we're good. Um, everybody's got their garrison orders, right? So they will now go to like whatever places the AI determines is most important, and they will defend. All right, so we've sorted out our armies. Everybody's in an army, right? Yeah, everybody's in an army. And I'm probably going to have Ike's troops train, but I haven't decided yet, so I'm going to wait on that. Uh, now, as far as Navy goes, here's, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So we want to kind of uh, sort out our, our navies. Now, I want subs together, so whenever I find subs... I'm going to try to put them all in one group. Um, I want destroyers to be together so that I can also lump them in with the bigger ships, like the carrier, for example. I want the carrier to have lots of destroyer defense because they kind of act as a screen. 
And we can also put the heavy cruisers in there, and that'll be kind of one of our... What are these? This is a light cruiser? Uh, let's save him. Let's put the light cruiser. These these are some battleships that we got, right? Yeah, battleships. Here's some more battleships. Why don't we put the battleships with the carrier? That'd be a huge fleet. All right, and uh, let's see. So we got this. We need this needs to have some more like destroyers and light ships, I think, obviously. But this is not our only navy. We have several others spread out. Uh, so that's the east coast one. This guy's all the way over in the Philippines. So what I might do is just kind of like combine Asian fleets in Hawaii. Because it doesn't take that long for the Asian fleets to like get over there or something. You know, if war were to break out, obviously I would be kind of moving them. So I'm going to, um, Hawaii has a fairly large naval base. I'm going to kind of start moving people to there. Like, I mean, navies to there uh, when I find them. Because I've got them kind of spread out. This is the Asiatic fleet. We just moved it, right? Yeah, okay. So we got second submarine Asiatic fleet. They should go there. Very good. And then we got a bunch of West Coast stuff. Uh, let's see. We got mostly battleships. We got, okay, so we'll just make like a secondary sub fleet. And then you know, I kind of want these guys. You guys go over, over to here, please. And they will do that. It's just I think it takes it a minute to kind of register and then I think I'll probably leave it at that for now now I'm gonna organize them more here we got a, okay we got a bunch of destroyers here actually so we should probably use those so we got a bunch of battleships we need to guard so I'm gonna bring those up there and then I think that might be all the fleets but I do need to do a lot more management but I have to wait until some of those orders are carried out Okay, as far as airplanes, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think airplanes might have to wait for the next episode because they're sort of all over the place right now and I really like to kind of micromanage them and control them. And I'm sorry we haven't even started the game yet, but this is the kind of game it is. It's a patience game. It's a game of organization and uh, strategy and stuff like that. So I'm going to be playing very slow like this and I'll be hopefully explaining what I do. And I hope you guys watch it. Uh, as people who also enjoy this game as much as I do and are enthusiastic about it. If not, you know, check out one of the other Let's Plays that I do that's a little more action-packed. And uh, if this is your thing, though, I hope to see you around, and please leave lots of comments. Thanks, and I'll check you on the next video.